Hey everyone, today we'll be discussing the VAT registration process. It's very difficult for many CFOs, managers and entrepreneurs to spend time to meet the compliance requirements in UAE. You need to make sure that you register for VAT on time and complete the registration process correctly. In this video, we have outlined step-by-step -step process on how you can register for VAT. Hey everyone, before we move ahead, please click on the subscribe button to stay updated on our weekly business and finance related content, which is incredibly useful for business owners, CEOs, CFOs, entrepreneurs, and those who aspire to be one. Now let's get back to the video. Why is it important that you register for VAT in the UAE? The first reason is you need to meet the compliance requirements of the UAE. Reason number two, it will give you the opportunity to claim back most of the input VAT on your expenses which will help you save some money. And the third reason is the penalties. The penalty for not registering on time are hefty. Before actually starting your registration process, we need to determine when is the right time for you to register your business. We have made a separate video just for this, the link for which we provided in the bio. When registering your company, the first step is to create the login on the online FTA portal. This is as simple as creating an account on Facebook. You need to mention certain details about your email address, mobile number and company details and submit and click on the verification link. Once you log in for the first time, you would need to click on add a new taxable person. This will take you to the dashboard of your portal. And there you will have an option to register for VAT. Once you click on that, you would be given certain details and information which you can review if needed. Once you have reviewed it, you can click on the checkbox below and then continue. You have now reached the first section of your registration. Let me share my screen so you can see what needs to be done. The first section is about the applicant. There are basically eight sections in the VAT registration form. You have to click save and continue to move on to the next section. If you decide to pause your registration in between, you always have an option to click a save as draft. So that way you don't have to lose all the work. The first question you will see is on what basis you would want to apply for registration. For most startups in the UAE, businesses would select legal person incorporated LLC, LLP partnership. You would then have to answer if you hold a valid trade license in the UAE and also decide on whether you are planning to join a tax group. You will also see an option to the side to answer if you are registering mandatorily or voluntarily. We have already discussed this in some of our older videos as well. You would select the mandatory threshold if you would have crossed taxable supplies worth of 375,000 dirhams in the last 12 months or next 30 days. And you would select the voluntary threshold if you have crossed 187,500 dirhams in the last 12 months or next 30 days. Once you click save and continue, you would reach the second section. You will have to now begin entering the legal name of your company in English and Arabic. Make sure to enter the right spellings in English and Arabic as per the trade license. If you have a different trade name, make sure to set this next question as yes and mention what your trade name is. When you scroll a little lower, you'll see the option to upload your trade license. Here you would have to select which authority your trade license is from, what your trade license number is and what date your trade license expires. Make sure to upload your trade license copy as well. Once you save the trade license, you would have the option to enter the owner's details. Here, you would have to mention the name in English and Arabic, the Emirates ID details, passport details and so on. Once you scroll a little lower, you would need to upload your certificate of incorporation if applicable. This is mostly applicable only for companies that have been incorporated in the free zones. Then you will have the option to upload your memorandum of association or your articles of association. In the last part of this section, if you scroll down, you will see you would need to enter the details of the manager. Make sure to enter the details of the person whose name is listed as the manager in the MOA or in the trade license. You would need to provide the English and Arabic name of the manager, the passport details of the manager and Emirates ID details of the manager if applicable. Then make sure you click on save and continue. After that, you would automatically move to the contact details section. Here you would need to include some of your basic contact details like your address and phone number. Once you click on save and continue, you will now move on to the banking details section. Here you would need to enter the details of your banks which includes the IBAN number, the BIC number and so on. You would have to select if your bank is in the UAE or outside the UAE as well. Make sure to enter the correct banking details of the company being registered. 
because if the wrong details is provided, this might lead to problems in the future when you're applying to apply for a refund. Once you've entered these details, click on save and continue. You would now move on to the business relationship section. Here you would need to provide information about any businesses in the UAE that the senior management owners or directors have been involved with in the last five years. This could be even for companies that have already been liquidated or for companies that the owners, directors or managers are no longer involved with. Once this is filled, click on save and continue and you would move on to the about VAT registration section. This part of the registration is where you have to be the most careful. The first part of this is to provide the business activities of the applicant. You will need to click the drop down and select whichever activity is most closely related to your business. Do note that you will not be able to find what is exactly mentioned as your activity in the trade license. You would have to find something that is most close related to yours. You can select more than one activity in the box right next to it. Now we're getting into the financial section. Here you would need to disclose how much turnover you have had in the last 12 months and how much turnover you're expecting to have over the next 30 days. Make sure that you're crossing the mandatory or voluntary threshold. If you are not, then you will not be granted a tax registration certificate. As you can see, there's also an option for you to upload the proof of your turnover. Here, you need to upload the turnover declaration form format, which is already provided by the FTA. This detail will also be provided in my description box below. You might also need to provide some sample invoices as supportings as well. Make sure to select correctly if you anticipate any exempt sales. You must also mention if you expect to have more taxable expenses in compared to taxable sales, which means you're expecting to be in a refund position. If you scroll down a little lower, as you can see, you will have to enter your import and export details. Here you would need to mention if you plan to import and if you plan to export. And you also have to mention if you plan to do the same in the GCC region. If you intend to do any business in the GCC state, you now have the option to mention this here. You can mention the name of the GCC state, a possible TRN number, and how much is the value of import or export you expect in that respective GCC state. Make sure to click Add GCC Activity once you're done. Now we're getting into the customs registration information. If you intend to do any trade internationally by importing or exporting goods to the UAE, then you need to have a customs number. You need to upload the details of the customs number here. As you can see, you need to mention which emirate your customs registration is, what your customs number is, and any proof to prove that that is your customs number. Make sure to click Add Customs Registration once you're done. If you scroll a little lower, you see the option to be exempt from the VAT registration itself. This option is only for businesses that intend to do only zero-rated sales. If you expect to do any 5% sales in the UAE, then this option is not applicable to you. If you select this option, you will not have to file any VAT return in the future. Also note, you will not be getting a TRN number. You will only get a TIN number. After this, you would need to mention what your effective date of registration is, when you have crossed the threshold and when you prefer to register. And if you have selected a date prior to your standard effective date, please explain that in the box below. Once you're done with this, click on save and continue to move to the next step. In the declaration section, you can see that you would have to provide the details of the authorized signatory. The authorized signatory is normally either the owner, manager, or anybody who's been given the power of attorney to be the responsible person to take all legal decisions of the company. Here you need to provide some basic information about the authorized signatory and its contact details. Do note that it's possible to have multiple authorized signatories. However, you can only submit one person's information in the FTA registration. So select one person who's going to be responsible for all the communications with the FTA. You can now select your preferred mode of communication and also your preferred language. Make sure to confirm and select all the checkboxes before clicking save and review. We are now in the last section of your VAT registration, which is review and submission. Here you have to scroll down and check if all the details you've provided is accurate. If it is, then you can go ahead and click the submit for approval section. Once you've finished submitting your application form, you need to now keep a tab on your email. You might receive an email from the FTA requesting for more details. If they do, you would need to submit the same details in the same portal mentioned. You may have a bit of a back and forth. Once this is all submitted and they approve your registration, congratulations, you have now got your own TRN number. Once you log into the dashboard, you'll be able to get your TRN number, your TRN certificate, what your effective date of registration is, 
and when your first VAT return is due. If you want to stay away from some of the common mistakes that business owners make when doing their VAT registration, do watch some of the older videos. I have mentioned the link of it in the description box. Hope this video was useful for you to understand how to do your VAT registration process. Hey everyone, you've reached the end of this video. Thank you all for listening. If you like this content, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like for us to talk about any specific topics, please do let us know in the comments below. Hope to see you in the next video.